In 2023, Your Excellency is the President of the both OPEC and the GCF. Your Excellency's deep knowledge of the oil and gas industry, long experience and diplomatic skills will undoubtedly help in this very demanding year. From your perspective, how can the GCF effectively succeed in this challenging environment? And what are your key objectives as the President of the GCF? Okay, first of all, I'm extremely happy to be at the office of GCF here in Doha, Qatar. First, as a minister of a member, Equatorial Guinea, at the same time for the year 2023 as the president of the Rotary of the Ministerial Meeting, but at the same time as a guest, because I'm also the president of OPEC, and in this case, the OPEC organization is visiting GCF. And this is a, a very special year, it's a challenging year, but for us in Equatorial Guinea and for myself uh, personally, it's very special because we do have the presidency of GCF and OPEC both of them. So being two organizations that in a way they deal with the resource, and this is oil and gas, that is very much similar. A lot of the, I'll call it the manifest of the objective for this year are pretty much similar. One of them, it's clearly as an African members, one key aspect that is very important for us is the energy poverty. We still have many population in this world, especially in the African continent, that lack energy, both energy for electricity, but energy for cooking oil. And the other issue that is going to be very important this year for this organization is to be able to have energy security. And the energy security requires a very important role because what it does is make sure that some of the members also are responsible of that security, that can make sure that that resource can come to their own market. The other part that is very important, and this is going to be one of my own, is that both organizations have a large number of African members. But at the same time, we have many African members who are actually discovering that resource, both oil and gas. And we want to encourage them to participate either as a server or members for us to be able to have a collective uh, cooperation on information. Other issue that is very important for us, and we do recognize it because it's been seen worldwide, it's the, the problematic of the climate change. It's very important that we all work together to be able to mitigate the problems that climate change is having to the world. But at the same time, we insist that it's very important education, not only for the producer, but especially for the consumers. Because climate change has two parts. And the part of the consumer is very important because consumers need to do the part to make sure that that can have that impact. The last one, and this is the more important one, is what I call the Equatorial Guinea mark, an African mark, that I want to take this opportunity to promote my continent, but at the same time my country, so we can cooperate with other members to be able to develop this resource that is good for our population. The recent past has shown that natural gas is set to play a pivotal role for decades to come. Yet, some continue to demonize its use and call for stopping investment altogether. Your Excellency has been a great defender of the right of Africa to develop its natural gas resources. Could you please elaborate more on this very important subject matter? Well, uh, the African members, um, and we did this in the COP26, we did the same thing in the COP27, and we will do it this year in COP28. We do have a different priority. We have close to 600 million Africans with lack of electricity. We have more than 900 million Africa with lack of resources to be able for cooking oil, for example. And for us, we need to be able to focus on our priority. Clearly, hydrocarbons have been an important part of this development. And we do believe the African um, countries have a right to be able to develop. But at the same time, we need to be able to talk about something very important. It's the responsibility of who has been responsible of some of the issues regarding climate change. This is called a little bit the responsibility of some of the developing countries that uh, need to be able to pay their part. Uh, we do believe that Africa need to be able to to, to develop the resources, mainly because uh, we need to be able to jump into the industrialization. The other issue that is very important for us is that for many years our resources have been used for other industries, other markets, and this will require that our market in our own African country are developed, so in the future we can use that oil and gas for the development of our continent, for the development of our market, 
to create employment and at the same time to be able to take us to the next level of development. Continuing with Africa, the continent enjoys the most number of member countries in the GCF. What is your perspective on GCF's role in Africa? First of all, I will start saying that gas is good for Africa. Gas is green for Africa. But at the same time, we have many members of Africans who are members of GCF. And this is mainly because many of the African members who actually have hydrocarbons have been in a situation in which they have never had a use for that gas. Now, GCF will have a very important role to be able to recommend and contribute with their technology and don't know how, how to do it. I will give you the best example. You have countries like Senegal, you have countries like Maurita uh, Mauritania, countries like Mozambique that in the past, because of the gas discovery, it was for that it was a waste resource. And now they are actually not only have developed, they are becoming exported of this resource. So clearly as a large, uh, as a, as a continent who have a large number of members, we do have clearly an important role because we need to make sure that other members can benefit. And the large number is not only in GCF, but also in OPEC. The fourth edition of Energy Invest Equatorial Guinea has just been launched, exploring the country's long-term development agenda. It puts Equatorial Guinea on the path to become a regional hydrocarbon hubs, an intersection of natural gas, and the energy transition. What are some of the key elements of this agenda? Well, the first one, I will start on, on GCF, on gas, and then I will discuss about oil. Regarding gas, uh, we are continuing with the development of what we call the gas mega hub, and it's the utilization of our own infrastructure to be able to capture more gas. We finished phase one, and this was with the Allen Field, and now we will be launching this same year phase two and phase three. Phase two will be able to connect another field that is called the Alba Tail, and then phase three will be the connecting the ascent. This is going to allow that that plant is going to have larger and longer period of life, but at the same time we'll be able to have a longer period of production that the, at this moment is very much needed regarding gas. Regarding oil, um, many of our fears are already material fears. Many of our contracts are about to expire, so we are going to be going into the next phase. And the next phase is to do a transition in which we become operators. By becoming operators, we are going to require to be able to modify infrastructure, but at the same time to continue with the drilling campaign. Drilling is going to be very important, and this is where we are encouraging exploration companies to be able to come to country, to be able to do that drilling, to increase our reserve, and also being able to utilize more of this resource to benefit. Thank you for speaking to GECF, Excellency.